To welcome you again to what moves you our um, photo talks um, that we started almost uh, a year ago um, today uh, we are uh, having um, Jimena Natera who will be the moderator and she will be speaking with Jose Cabezas who will present uh, his photographs I will introduce them a, a little more in, in just a little bit uh, my name is Anja, Anja Hitzenberger. Um, I started Strudel Media Live online photography classes a couple of years ago. And um, I want to thank you for being here. And I want to thank you especially for your donations. Uh, all of your donations go to the Migrant Kitchen. And um, I started doing these photo talks uh, almost a year ago when the pandemic started to help people in need. And I was very happy when I found the Migrant Kitchen uh, who has been cooking for people now for uh, exactly one year. I just found out today that um, they started uh, doing this uh, one year ago um, when uh, the Migrant Kitchen originally uh, started as a catering company. And a year ago, all of a sudden, all of their gigs just evaporated uh, and they had 1000 meals reserved uh, and they needed to figure out what to do with these 1,000 meals. And that's when they started to cook for people in need, for people affected by COVID. So uh, today is their one year anniversary. So I'm quite excited that our talk is actually on this day. Um, yeah, I recommend the food of the Migrant Kitchen if you are in New York. Every meal that you order will get a free meal to a person in need. And I had the chance to taste their food a couple of months ago and it's really delicious. So I highly recommend it. Now, I want to introduce our speakers and moderator. Um, I want to welcome uh, Jose Capezas for, for being here and for presenting his work, and also Jimena Natera, who will be the moderator. Uh, Jimena is a visual journalist and editor, and she was born in, and raised in Mexico. And um, she has been part of PDP since 2013, which is an independent Mexican network for journalists that aims to improve journalistic practice and safety across the country. She's based in New York since 2019 and her own work focuses on stories of resilience and also on people who face extraordinary challenges. And uh, Jimena was also my student at the International Center of Photography. That's how we met. She took uh, my movie class that I teach together with Edward Ratliff and um, so I'm very happy that she's here today to moderate this talk. And Jimena, if you are ready, you can um, introduce Jose to us, please. Thank you so much. Thank you, for, thank you so much for the invitation. Uh, this is a big, big privilege. I have admired and loved Jose's work for years. So it is a great gift that I am able to share it with you all guys. Thank you so much. And thank you for donating for the Migrant Kitchen um, and for coming here and talk about, photo about photography. Um, so I'm going to introduce Jose. And um, I met Jose a few years ago at the Photo Cup, one of the biggest um, journalism uh, festivals in Central America and Latin America. And I met, I, I got to know his work that we're going to talk to about today, the Los Historiantes or the History Dancers. And I'm just, just to, just to get some background on Jose. Um, he is uh, a Salvador, Salvadorian photographer. He lives and works in El Salvador. He was, he was born in, in California in 1971. And as, as a lot of people from El Salvador, he has have this double um, country experience with where his life has come and gone between the US and El Salvador. And I think that informs a lot his point of view and his work as a photographer. Um, it's 
uh, you if you have seen photographs of El Salvador and Central America in international news, a big chance is that those pictures are from him. He is one of the few uh, stringers and photographers working for international agencies working from El Salvador and covering breaking news and daily life. Um, um, he, uh, he has experience as, um, as a photographer for newspapers, from local newspapers where he worked um, uh, five years. And then he has over 12 years working for international um, news agencies. Um, and prior to this, prior to this talk, I have been talking with him, you know, like how to present him and his work. And something that for me is very particular and very important to understand what he does. He he said um, he was talking to me and he he told me, you know, like he all his life has been defined by the context of violence in El Salvador first during the 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 the, the civil war and then during the context of violence because of the um, um, gang violence that has ravaged El Salvador and Central America in the last 15, 20 years. And what he said is like, it's just the war continues. The war never stopped. It's just one war was political and the other, it became um, social war. Um, so I think that's a very, that we need to understand that lens before we jump in into his work. And we're going to talk about his personal project, The History Dancers, that it's a 10 year documentation of um, people trying to maintain and recreate uh, very long, very old traditions in rural El Salvador. This is, it, the, 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 his project, the pictures are beautiful. Uh, it's, uh, it's mostly done in a medium format camera, film, black and white, in a very slow process, very beautiful portraiture. And it's not only, a, this, this project is not only a document of the traditions, but it's also in a way a document of how El Salvador has transformed and all the different crises and things that had happened in the past decade. Um, so I'm very excited that I get to share it with you all. And well, I just want to welcome Jose. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, as Jimena said, I'm a photographer here in El Salvador. Oh, I have many years working uh, as a photographer, and I'm really pleased to be with you today. Perfect. Well, um, before we go and talk more about history dancers, I want uh, I want you to share some of your everyday work, the work that almost everybody has seen of you, but that it's you know like it's kind of the attached because it is through. Um, uh, photography agencies. It's breaking news. So if we, we are going to, can you, you're going to show us some of that, right? Okay, perfect. Here's some, uh, uh, here's, well, I started like to show you how was my work every day. This picture was from 2018 and I was uh, covering the migrant caravan between Guatemala and Mexico. And I cross with them. And as you can see, I mean, I have to be very close with people trying to uh, uh, like not experience what they do, but I, tr I try to be as close as I can. I follow uh, two caravans through Mexico. And for me, it was a, a big experience for me. And also I, I cover violence in El Salvador, which is, uh, this picture start from the most violent year. What, I mean, what I, this is the kind of work what I do for, uh, for Reuters. What I, is the news outlet where I work currently. And I think it's pretty clear what I do every day in, that was the reason why I tried to get out of this, um, trying to do something different uh, as, as a photographer. 
Just, just for, for explaining a little bit of the context that it is mm -hmm. working in El Salvador. So, um, so what is happening with, I mean, in a very short version because it's a okay. very complex. So th there, in the past 15 years, there has been an incredible, an incredible um, peak in violence due to gang violence, right? Can you speak a little bit about that? Sure. Um, the thing is, as, as, as you say, uh, and we were talking before, Saro is really uh, marked with violence since I remember. Uh, we suffered a war from 12 years that ended in 1992, but the causes of war like it was poverty, uh, lack of uh, human, uh, the respect for human rights in El Salvador is always been an issue. And that's what I was doing since I worked as a photographer. What I showed you before um, is uh, the result of we have a social war between gangs. In, in a society with this, uh, have a very big difference between rich people and poor people. And that causes a, a great conflict in, in our society. We have, uh, to tell you, we have more killings during this time than during the war. And it's, uh, and it's a pretty tough reality for us. And as a media, as a photographer, as a journalist, we are caught in the middle because we have to, uh, we have, we have to show a, a, an image of the country what our news outlets have, want to show to the American or European public. Mm -hmm. And and um, uh, you like you were, you know, you were saying that this is jumping a little bit forward. But the project that we're going to the project that we're going to watch, you started making it um, during the most violent year. Uh, can you can you explain? Can you tell us a little bit about that year and like try try to to explain um, what that violence means? Because I think that for people who are not in our countries, for people who are, it's very hard to take a grasp of what you know what we talk about when we say it's been a violent year. Well, it's uh, you know it's different when like uh, an American journalist or European journalist has to come to El Salvador and experience violence because they stay here for a week, maybe something like that, and they leave. For me and for my colleagues, we have to live with this all the time. Uh, we have our families here, we have friends, we have our normal lives in the middle of all this violence, which is different than a war like in Syria or you know, name it. I mean, there's many conflicts around the world. This is different because we don't have that kind of violence. It's like, um, it's like silent violence. If you go, for example, I live in a very safe place, but if I go to another uh, part of the city, which is not uh, as safe as the place where I live, then we have to experience like uh, gang members coming to us, asking for our IDs or asking what we are doing there. Or if we go with the police, it might happen that we can get caught in something what we don't want to uh, uh, experience, like shooting or whatever. So I started this uh, project because I wanted to, first of all, show a different side of El Salvador which is, which is not seen in, in, in the news. Uh, as a photographer, I wanted to do something different and in some other way to like keep my mind uh, clean or away for a while for what I do for a living every day. And I try to do something in my own terms, uh, at my pace, uh, in a different style where I, what I do as a photographer for to to, to have a, to have a make a life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I mean it's it's it's, it's completely different. Trying to 
show to my, I mean, to, to, to see myself as, different, as a different photographer. And also because um, I don't want to be uh, a, identified as a photographer of gangs or violence or blood, whatever. I, I want to uh, leave like a different legacy as a photographer for my people, for everybody to know it. Can you can you show us the picture that uh, was recently named one of the best photographs of 2020? Sure. Wait, let me see. This this photograph was um, taken and dispersed by Reuters, and it was in almost every newspaper around the world. And it was trying to illustrate what it meant for a place like uh, El Salvador, the, the pandemic, and. Can you speak a little bit about this picture? Sure. Oh, oh can you see the picture, right? Sorry. Okay. Yes. yes. Um, what it happens here is, um, as a, it, for us, it's a very normal uh, picture that I have I experienced uh, visiting jails for for many years. But what ha what happened here is um, during the COVID. Uh, emergency, uh, the government uh, invited us to go to inside two jails in the, here in El Salvador to see that uh, inmates didn't have a special treatment because uh, some special investigation of another media say that they have, the, the government was uh, negotiating with gang members and they have a special treatment inside jails. And for me, even for me that I experienced, I saw these images all the time. For me, it was very difficult to see all these guys like, a, like I was walking inside a zoo or something like that, because I think it's not, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it's not, it's the dignity of these guys are, are very, are, I don't know, I don't even have, want to, I don't know how to say it because it, it impressed me a lot. And I sent this, this picture for the WordPress photo contest and it, it made it for the, almost for the final round, but I didn't win. In some ways, you know, everybody wants to get recognized but your work, but sometimes when you get recognized for something like this, I don't, you know, I don't feel right. It didn't feel right for me to get recognized or something like that. And I don't know. Uh, so, so in a way, so in a way, not not you know like you know like not putting this photograph in a larger audience felt like a relief. Sorry, what? So so this picture not going you know more around the world for you felt kind of like a relief, right? Yeah, actually it was really it was published everywhere mm -hmm. it was in the best pictures of 2020 like in almost every newspaper in Europe and the United States I have many calls from editors for have an interview for this but what happened and every time it was difficult for me to talk about it because when you are in front of these guys I mean you have to you have to be quick to take the picture, but when you are editing or after everything happens, I mean, what I see in the picture is it's completely different for me. And it has, uh, for me, it's, 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 it's not a good feeling. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and also something that it's very, you know, like it's very concerning about what's happening in Salvador is that a lot of the social problems around the gangs, it's around young men and young men that are criminalized, that are like, they are actually coming from very hard and complicated situations that they don't have access to much. And then they fall into the gangs, which become kind of like a, another type of security or a support system. And there, there is this very um, sad feeling that every man under 30 is on a death sentence in one way or the other. Right, like you don't have access to too much, so in a certain way, like 
these these photographs kind of represent of represent the possibilities of a whole generation that has mm -hmm. lost so much. Well, you know, it's difficult because even it, it, they know. I mean, it's difficult for me when I started to work in around two thousand two thousand and six. I think I met a, a young guy like around seventeen years old, and who was all these faces full of uh, tattoos and everything. And we were talking. We had the chance to talk, and he told me about why he joined the, the gang and whatever. And many years later, 2012, I, I, I saw him inside a jail and he was obviously older and he has sentenced to 80 years in jail of uh, accused of under charges of homicide. And that day I saw him in another jail and he recognized me and say hello i i know you i remember you we talked like twice all over my and he told me like he was he retired from the gang but inside the jail and there was no chance for him to go out and to live his life i mean he's still young but he's uh an old man inside of him mm -hmm. and for me i mean young people don't think about it and because they have no, in, in sometimes in their neighborhoods, they have no other, for them, in their view, they have no other opportunity like joining the gang or do something else, but there's no future for them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's the harsh reality what they live. Mm -hmm. And and so the the your project History Dancer was somehow instinctively a reaction to this kind of work and this kind of narrative, right? Yeah, because every, you know, when a American or European journalists come to El Salvador, they always look for the same images. And in some way they show like every young man or, or woman in El Salvador is a gang member or uh, it's related to that. But it's more, it, there's more in the Salvador than that. I mean, there's people like, uh, they are trying to make a life, even in the middle of this, uh, in a situation which is not, is not the best situation, but they, they keep their tradition, they celebrate, they got married, they, they do what normal people do. And it's a complete different country, what we see in the, in the news all the time. Can you can you please show us those pictures? Sure. Let's see. And if you can uh, tell us a little bit about how you how you arrived to this story and how you started this project. When when I was uh, when when I started to work in a, in a, in in a wire service, I started to take some pictures with my digital camera because I. Remember, I visited a town uh, to, to take some pictures of this tradition. And I remember I say, oh, this is, this is different. This is maybe beautiful. As a photographer, you're always looking for a nice uh, thing or nice... Uh, Un poquito más lento, por favor, Jose. Las okay, sorry. <laughs> Las fotos. Ah, okay. So uh, what I... What I what I try to do, what I what I try to uh, is, sorry. So I identify something what is really appeals to me, because I remember um, this. The, El Salvador is not a country who has a very, or is has no cultural identity, or ethnic identity because uh, indigenous people was almost wiped out of the country and there's no many uh, traditions in El Salvador. So I started to investigate and, and I identified some towns where they celebrate this uh, a tradition called Los Historiantes. Uh, in English is something like the historians because in the dance, it's like a dance, but they tell a story about the crusaders and their um, adventures in the Middle Ages. 
in their battles to, uh, you know, I think everybody is familiar with the, with the Crusades. So in the beginning, I started to do it with my digital camera, but it, it didn't feel good for me because it was in, uh, it's not in the, I was not uh, getting what I wanted. Uh, I was looking for pictures with uh, 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 to survive in time, not in a, a, a I don't know, in a, in a historical to survive in time in a in a historical way. And I started to uh, use di some different uh, cameras. I used like maybe uh, ten different cameras, from digital cameras, from uh, film cameras. Uh, I use um, Nikon, Canons, whatever, and I ended using uh, my old trusty, an old trusty Hasselblad. What a friend of mine sold it to me to to uh, to do the the project. Was that just like the, the be be slower with the photos so everybody can see them? Let them let them share it with us. Okay, sorry. It's because something happened here that it goes down. So so you started you started photographing this project in which year? Two thousand and seven? Two thousand and seven, yes. Two thousand and seven. And you were using a digital camera, right? Yeah. The first purchase where I show you was from that time from the digital camera. And then I ended uh, uh, using the medium format camera because I were I used to work with the with the digital camera and in post production made it in black and white because here in El Salvador it's difficult to get a black and white film developed film and everything and a friend of mine told me like if you like um, black and white film so much why don't you do it on film. So that's what I did. I mean, I started to work in, in black and white film. And I remember in 2011, I think, I have an accident. What it left me in a very tough position and I thought I was not going to be able to work anymore. So when I got, um, when I started to work again, I, I, I thought about, uh, get the project uh, to take the project seriously uh, because I didn't you know I, I work in, in sometimes and, and everything but I started to work in my in my spare time when I have nothing to uh, when I don't have uh, any assignments for the for for writers so I started to uh, working in my project Jose, you're going too fast on some of the images. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many images you have in that folder. If you have a hundred photos in there, it's okay to skip some, mm. but they're very beautiful. It's nice to really yes. see them. A little bit slow, let them breathe. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I got a little bit nervous with all that because it's, for me, it's, it's the first, sorry, I, it's the first time what I show this project for ah. a, a different audience. And I'm really sorry. The, the first time I saw this project, Jose was sharing it for the first time ever, like four years ago. And he brought like 200 prints, like very beautiful prints, analog prints. And he put them in a table and he said like, I don't know where to do, where to go after this. So I understand. So, okay. Sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, this, this this picture this is special picture was like the first picture what i took when i uh, uh what i why and i found the real reason why i started this uh this project mm -hmm. uh this is from a town from close to san salvador uh, which is ciudad delgado and i remember uh a guy who was uh, a friend of mine told me 
you know what? A guy from Los Historiantes, a very old guy, just died. I mean, and they're going to have the funeral. And I think they are going to dress up with all his, uh, uh, with the costume. Uh, and they're going to take him to the cemetery. You should come because it, it's going to be, nobody see this before. So I asked for permission and the people was very kind with me and they told me, thank you so much to take the time to don't let this for, to be forget and keep this for, the, for history. And everybody uh, let me photograph the funeral because it's, uh, he was a member of the, of the historiantes and, very loved, uh, and a very loved man in the community. You know, what, what, what was going on is uh, all these people are farmers, are uh, private security guards, people, janitors, or people who sell in the market. But for once every year, they are somebody. They, have, they are a different person. Because they celebrate every year in their communities uh, when they have, they have a saint. Uh, what they, which is uh, like uh, the the, petro, the patron saint of, of the town or the neighborhood, so they wanted to celebrate a big celebration. That's why they dress like this, all these uh, uh, characters from some other uh, time. And and, and this, this project had you have photographed around eight towns, right? All across, eight. across the country. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, it's not in one town, it's a uh, different, actually, three neighborhoods of the capital city and some other outside in the, in, in the, in some other parts of the country. Um, for example, in this picture, it, which is in a town, uh, in some way, because there's so many things to talk about it, and I got, I mean, everything got in my mind all, it got, all the ideas come in one time, sorry. But um, for example, uh, this tradition, I mean, or traditions are, um, because as part of society, they're not static uh, as a picture because a picture is not never going to change, but a tradition as a part of society, they, they evolve, I mean, they change. So they, Salvadorian society is very, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, is very machista. They, um, they don't let women to participate in traditions like this. It's like, a, like uh, the, theater, the Shakespeare tradition that men used to uh, interpret women characters. So for example, this picture was, uh, it, it has a great significance for me because in one time, in one time I discovered the guy who was a very uh, traditional man let a woman to interpret uh, a man's character because they learn, they, they, he learned in some way that to keep the tradition alive, they have to uh, let women participate with, with men together to keep uh, the tradition uh, alive in in their town. This is this is very interesting because um, what I was saying at the beginning that this doc, that this project documents not only these traditions but like how El Salvador has changed. Mm -hmm. You 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 have talked to me about um, about you know like how the old members of the communities are the ones who teach the 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 the, the dances and the theater to the young, but because of the because of it's because young men are targets of the Mara of the gang violence, or they die, or they they go to jail, or these traditions have changed. So, so how has that been for you? And I think this is a particular picture, right? Yes, it is. Um, you know, it's very hard for me because I I go every year. I try to go every year to almost to the same places. And this particular picture was when I was testing one of the cameras, what I used. 
And I remember this guy was very kind with me. We were talking and everything he was very uh, enthusiastic about the dance. He interpreted, I saw him two years in a row and that's why he was the first one to, uh, to pose for me. And I remember the, in that Christmas, it was in January. On Christmas, uh, a friend of mine, I, I have friends in all these towns. I made friends because they, they let me know when something is going on with these guys. And he told me, you know what? Uh, you remember that guy you photographed, uh, uh, the, what, the first guy you photographed before in, in, in a pastor peck? And I said, yes, I remember it. And whatever. I told him he was killed last night. He was, he was, his body was found in the town last night because he was kidnapped um, the night before and they, they found the body the next day. He was a very young man and, and they say in the town, they were saying he was a gang member and a dead squad, which is very common here. Uh, like civilians take uh, justice in their hands, they kill him. And this is the only um, testimony of his life. Like he's not only a criminal. He was a young man doing something when he was he, he doing something what he felt he felt proud of doing. And it was sad for me that Chris, uh, during Christmas they have a, a, to know something like that. I mean, I don't know. This picture is a very special picture for me. Uh, and that's why tradition in some way is not keeping, it's, it's not, it's very difficult for them to, to keep them alive because young men die all the time or they leave because they, they are trying to save their lives or they go, they have, they have to migrate to the United States to have a life. I mean, because they are looking for life and they are going to have the, that, the life what they want uh, they are not going to get it in their towns. And that's why uh, it, it's very difficult for these people to keep their tradition alive because they're all the, they're changing people all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's, for me, it's one of the most important parts of, of this project that in itself, as you have been photographing for a decade, uh, how these people are trying to root their, their traditions and how are they trying to understand their identity. A lot of that identity has been lost to, to, to economic violence, to gang violence, and to mm -hmm. abandonment of the government. And that and is for, uh, sorry, and for example, this young man, he was covering, they were covering their faces because it was one of the most violent years in the summer. I mean, and I told him, could you move your uh, bandana or whatever and show me the, your face because I want a nice portrait. And they say, no, because I don't want to be recognized in the picture. And the only thing what I can see is, is, is their eyes because they were so afraid to be published somewhere. And then they were not going to be able to go somewhere else because they, are going to, they were going to be recognized. And which is, I don't know if it sounds uh, weird for you, but here in Salvador, some, some young men cannot go from one town to the other because they are in de their life, they are in real, real danger. And that's why a lot of uh, young people migrate to, to uh, the United States just to feel free, just to be able to go somewhere else. And it's difficult because they are afraid even to show their faces in a photograph. They're afraid even by the possibility to, to be recognized in a publication. And I get that all the time. That's why every picture what you have in, in this uh, project is what's very difficult to uh, convince them to, to post. Mm -hmm. Because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult for me and for them. Also, like, speaking of this challenge of, you know, like deciding how to photograph somebody that is in danger, but trying to, you know, like to capture this, because it is also important 
How was your approach to portraiture that is very specific? You started photographing more documentary style, like, uh, you know, like following people. And then you, as, as, as you transitioned to another type of cameras, you, you focused in portraiture. Why did you, why did you decide that? Because um, many people, sometimes this is not, many people photographed before uh, the dance but in color and they have those beautiful pictures but i try to uh, for, uh, to be entirely dedicated for the people for the faces of the tradition because uh, this tradition transmitted from one generation to the other in an oral way there's no nothing written or they have for example, they rescued some documents, uh, written documents. So there's no memory for this. And there's the picture of the people who participate from one year to the other, uh, that memory is lost. So that's why I, I, I try to uh, be uh, focused with that people, not too much with the dance, but in order to the, for like people like you to understand what they were going on, that that's why I started with the dance, like trying to um, make my work more specific with the people. Um, hey, Mina, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, I just would like uh, for you, Jose, to talk about a little bit more about why you do black and white, why you do analog. You told me yesterday when we spoke, you use a lot of different cameras and why you don't use your regular digital color camera that you use for work. Can you talk about that a little bit? Okay, because I start, I stopped it to use my, my, my digital camera because I didn't, I, I didn't want to stay away from my, my everyday feeling of using the camera. Digital camera is very fast and is uh, and it's easier for me, but I wanted to slow down, and that's why I use uh, a digital, uh, sorry, uh, film camera. Was not an uh, easy choice, as I said, it's very difficult to get film, to get film developed, and every, it's, it's difficult. But what I, what I wanted to have is a different view. A personal view, but because when I was working with the digital camera, this is what it was seen. I mean, a, a, a format, that kind of a film and medium format style. But mm -hmm. in some way, I, it, it was my way to uh, show like the soul of the people, not in color, because everybody else was doing, uh, do everything in color. But that's my personal view for for life. And, and also, and also, I you you've told me this before that you felt that the color would make this would folklorize this. Oh, okay. As in a as in a way, because at at the end, like this is an interpretation of what they understand or remember. It's this is like their their the clothes and it's you know it's a it's a. An interpretation of what they remember. Yeah, actually, uh, the thing is, uh, an old man from uh, from historians told me, like, this is not folk folkloric. This is this is not a thing made it for tourists. And if this is a tradition, which is different, this is something what is a heritage for them. There are there is something which is a, a part of the cultural identity of of the town or the neighborhood. So in color, it's, it's like, um, you know, it's completely different because it's, I wanted to stay away from beautiful pictures just to uh, nice pictures. I wanted something, something more, uh, something more uh, uh, historical in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a question from the audience. Um, 
so here it is. Uh, Jose, how do you make this space, the physical and mental space, uh, to separate personal work from day-to-day -day work with the newspapers? And are there any specific actions you take to switch your brain between the two? That's the main reason why I, I decided to change uh, the camera. Because when I was using the same camera, what I used to go, like what I do every day, I work very fast. Uh, my ideas were not the same. Um, I, I, I try to stay away from, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, and that's why I try to not to take the digital camera. But it's, it's, it's funny because it, it, there is some pictures where you are not able to get it because as, as a photographer, you know, uh, Hasselblad or a Mamiya RB67 or a Rolleiflex are not, they are not cameras made it to, to have action pictures, for example. But I did, I did this pray to be away from my everyday feeling of photography. And I wanted to convince myself like I was better or good doing something else in photography. That's why I always wanted to be a photographer, um, not just to uh, do what I regularly, regularly do every day. Uh, I actually have another question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned uh, that there weren't really indigenous people left anymore. And I'm uh, guessing, is that from when the Spanish arrived or is that from a later period? And also to follow up on that. Um, so we're seeing these traditional outfits. Uh, is this sort of a, a tradition that was created without actually having some knowledge of the past or uh, is this like kind of a very much of a living tradition that isn't based on recreating something that's old or is just wondering if okay. you could talk a little about that? Okay, I'm going to answer the, the last question because I think it's, it, it's in different order. Hmm. This tradition was brought by the Spaniards to uh, Latin America during the conquer, during the, uh, when they came to, uh, to live in, in, that, in, in this continent. So they, they use it like a way to teach the indigenous people like they have a, power, a powerful God uh, and they help uh, uh, to, teach, to teach them that they, they, God helped them to uh, conquer other lands and they were not going to be, it was not going to be different in, this, in Latin America. So the indigenous adopted this, uh, this tradition and made it and uh, changed almost everything from the mask. As you can see in this picture, and there is the, there's two sides in, in the dance, what is the Muslims and the Christians. And there's always a, like, it, they are like representing the fight between the good versus evil. But this is ironic because you don't know which one is the good and which one is the evil. Uh, sometimes indigenous uh, like to, or people try to pick the Muslims because they, they, they it, it was a way to fight against their oppressors in some sort of way. <clears throat> the reason why there's no indigenous, no, there's almost no indigenous presence in El Salvador it's because in 1932, a president, it was an, uh, uh, it was like an uh, uprising in El Salvador, like the first like socialist uh, uprising in the continent. So this president killed, there's, there's no, uh, there's, there's no way to, to know how many people he, the, the army killed in 1932, but they almost disappeared, uh, the indigenous people from El Salvador. And beside that, uh, a law from that time prohibited the indigenous to talk their language and to wear their traditional dresses. But this tradition in some way survived that period of time. 
because it was a dictatorship that was very tough with cultural things related with indigenous issues. Thank you, that's fascinating to hear and your photos are great, beautiful. Yes. Oh, thank you. As everyone is commenting too. <laughs> The the but for Brenda Torres who is asking no there there was not um, although I think there's actually a big community of uh, Muslim people in Central America in general in Honduras it's more present but but no this is more the tradition this is more a Spanish tradition when the Spanish tradition when the mm. Spanish came to Latin America they brought these um, traditions that they would reference the the. The, the, how, how do you say, what's the name, uh, Jose, Jose? The um, Crusades against- the Crusaders. The Crusaders between, like the fight between the Spanish people, the Peninsular Spanish and the, the, the Muslim uh, people from, from South. So it's, it's something that it's almost everywhere. The references against Muslim people is actually very rooted in all ca Catholic countries in Latin America. And it's, a deeper limit that it's not very often uh, discussed or, okay. or yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Somebody else has questions? We're open. There's another question by Kathy. It's, um, does the tradition have some root in medieval carnival practices? Yes, actually it is because they, they show traditions or they show stories. That's why the, that's why the name is the historiantes which is uh, the name like the, uh, somebody who tells a story and they try to tell a story from the Middle Ages through the dance and the speech because they say in a speech uh, and it was written in ancient Spanish language. So everything relates to the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. um, I have another question. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Jimena, something that you posted yesterday on Facebook, I found really fascinating. You were writing, this project is a rebellion against traditional journalistic practice, a rebellion against the narrative of violence in El Salvador. So I basically want to uh, hear more about um, uh, the images you showed before. How can we convince photo editors to also show like your personal work? How can we convince them to show the non-traditional photojournalistic images? Wow. <clears throat> <It's difficult. laughs> <Who knows? laughs> Sorry, it's difficult because I, I was telling Jimena yesterday that I attended to, um, for example, for the New York Times portfolio review, but I was never chosen for some reason. Um, it's difficult sometimes to uh, convince somebody to publish a, a something personal. For example, I made a version in color uh, with digital camera and it showed to, I showed it to my editor. I say, you know, I was working for this for several years and whatever, so and so. And she said, no, I think it's too terroristic. I don't, I don't really like it. I mean, I don't get mad because um, I know not everybody's going to get the same idea. But uh, after all this time, I think it's time for me to publish this. And I'm trying so hard to get it published. And, and it is a rebellion, not, not to a journalistic tradition, not to a political tradition, because um, it's a rebellion even for myself, because I was never, I never take I pray it so seriously. I was telling Jimena, um, a friend of mine, it was just a French a cinematographer and filmmaker called Christian Poveda, who made a, a movie a, called La Vida Loca, who was about the gang members and everything. I took him, I took him, I have a, this was Christian, my, a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, I took him once to see what, what I was trying to do. And because I said, you know what? I, I don't know, I'm not pretty sure about to do this project and everything. And he told me, you know what? You should do it. And because if you don't do it, I will going to do it. 
<laughs> and I don't, I don't going to feel, I don't want to feel any regrets if I saw this picture, this story from you. <laughs> so you have the commitment to do this. And he was, this was, this picture was in January 2009. And he was killed in September of that year. So I took that compromise very seriously. And, and I think besides my family, I think it was a, uh, for me, the biggest commitment in my life, I think. And, and it, it, you know, it takes a village to make something like this because to Christian who asked like, how do you find the space? That, you know, the, the working conditions are pretty tough for Latin American photographers. And uh, the idea of the personal project is not very, common because there's no time there's you know by the time you keep you finish working enough to to pay your rent and leave with the bare minimum you don't have like mental trying to do anything else and there's this story that I absolutely love is that who helped you to get who helped you get all the roles to make these photographs how did you how did you uh, actually did you my cousin I think he's in the audience and she was a very big part uh, of this project because he she gave me like a hundred more than a hundred roles and that's how I was able to to finish and work at this this project besides my um, some uh, some other uh, gigs where I have working and put everything in film and in chemicals in cameras <laughs> and. I think I could, I should have, a, 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 I, but this time I, I should have a better car, but I have projects, I have, a, <laughs> I have all these pictures. And there was a lot of very special people for me who helped me all these years, especially my family. Jimena, um, time is almost up. So yeah. let me ask uh, if, Anybody has more questions? You can unmute yourself, please. And now is the is your opportunity to ask or put them into the chat. I'm sure Himina has more questions also, but I think we should maybe do another five minutes and then we should wrap it up. No, I, I mean if somebody has questions, I, I for me it's really a privilege to present this work and like put it out there. I, I adore it and I think it's very, very valuable and very needed. And I'm pretty happy that you all guys get to see it. Also, in the future, the, the Jose sees this work as a book. So I think that's oh. probably the next step. Let's just keep completely the media. Let's bring this work to houses, you know? Yeah, that was my question. Uh, if you guys were considering making it a book, you know? Because I, I I love the story, as sad as it is some of the parts are, uh, but the photographs are beautiful and the story should be told. And so Thank you very much. Actually, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm putting together an, an, a, a picture show for in September, which is the bicentennial of the uh, Central American independence. And then I am I'm working really hard in, a, in a edit for a book, but it's not a very easy thing to do, especially it's difficult in the United States, but here it's, it's double difficult, but I'm working on it and we are working on it. Somebody is saying, Marina is saying, a video installation with these photos will be beautiful. I think that's a great idea. Uh, yes. Marina, maybe you can help him set that up. <laughs> Thank you. It's a good idea. And another message from Annie. Thanks for the intimacy of your presentation. Painful, but the sensitivity of your work speaks chapters about you. Lots of positive feedback. Okay. So any more questions from anybody? I also want to say that if you want to stay and say hi to Jose or to Jimena or to Edward or to Anya, please stay. 
Um, and uh, then we can chat a little longer. Otherwise, I want to ask Himina, do you have any other questions or things to say for Jose? Uh, no, just like, thank you very much for sharing this with us. I know it's very hard. Thank you. <laughs> I think you still have this project very close to you, but I really think it's, I, I really absolutely, as a journalist and as a, a woman from Latin America, from that region, I think this, you know, this is the kind of narratives that we need to understand better the, what the region looks like and why there's migration and why, why you know, like the politics are very complicated. Um, so yeah, so please, thank you for your work. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, for sure, this is, a, this is a very special project for me. And when I started, it didn't mean that in that time for me, I was I, like every other photo, any other photographer, I was looking for something like interesting, um, visual, whatever. But I think sometimes the more important thing to to have to do pictures, to do our work, I think is not in the photographic uh, knowledge or skills. I think better to be um, empathic with people, very be very close with people. And I think I learned a lot of things about history, uh, about the, the history of my country uh, and why people try to make a life in the United States, why people uh, miss the tradition. And, to, uh, and especially because sometimes work like this is, is made by, for, for ourselves, to know ourselves because we, we didn't, we don't, sometimes we are, we don't know where we come from. And, uh, and now I think I'm pretty sure where I come from. And that's why I think my, my job uh, in some sort of way is more important here than in the US, for example. But the weird thing I'm working for a, a, a multinational <laughs> company, which is make pictures for everybody in the world, but my work is not seen by almost nobody here in El Salvador. Oh, that's interesting too, actually, mm -hmm. wild. <laughs> yes, it is. Jose, thank you so much. This was really very inspiring. And I want to thank uh, everybody who was here today. And